Windows 10's out there, yes. Now, we'll guarantee you by next time there will be a fan, if not two, <laughs> in this room. Because uh, I don't do heat very well. Um, okay, so we've um, showed how to how to correct that. Now, that's a key um, part of Windows in general, is if you right mouse click on uh, anything, it brings up a menu that's specific to whatever you're clicking on. So it'll vary. Like right now, if I click on one of my other words, I right, I right mouse clicked on it, it brings up any everything that it thinks I might need uh, for that particular item. You see, there's uh, no there's no options up here, but towards. Um, I could uh, I could come down here and change it to to near, in the direction of, on the way to, on the road to, just before. So if you wanted your um, if your writing sounds kind of choppy, you could change it to different words. Or if you want to make it simpler, dog ran fast to. Uh, city, <laughs> the greenhouse. Uh, obviously, my my um, grammar isn't uh, too good there. If I right click on dog, I can do the same thing, and I can say canine, pooch, mongrel, mutt, uh, bad word, um, pup, puppy. So I could choose canine. Right click on the word. Yeah. And uh, down there, um, that's there up here on the side. If you, if you want one of those words, you just mouse over to the left. Okay. You see, it does not specify uh, issues like that. If two is spelled right, but what you meant was the T O. Yeah. If you want to put another letter in there, you click where you want to put the letter at. Um, it's like mine, the K9 ran fast to, if I click here, then I can start typing letters. Now you can also, if you notice where your cursor is at, you can also use your arrow keys to move to where you want to type at. Some people like to do that instead of using the mouse. Um, <laughs> my question. Yeah, you can use your left arrow key to go to the left. Uh, you're at the end. Uh, if you want to type more words, you can do a space. And then you can type like today. Um, it should be, um,
Now that we got some words on there, we're going to format them. So if you, um, you see, I got the word the here. If I click there one time, it becomes the cursor goes in the middle there. If, and this is sometimes tricky to do, if you double click it, it'll highlight the entire word. Like if I double click K9, double click fast, double click city. See how it highlights the entire word? Now, and I'm not always good at this, but if you do it three times and don't do it another time, it'll highlight the entire sentence. Left mouse click. So that's a that's a nice way to quickly uh, select something. You can also um, click and hold down with your left mouse button. Like if I click to the right of E in K9 and hold down my mouse and move it to the left, it can highlight a word. It's probably easiest uh, to just to double click on if you want to highlight a word. Now, once you got something highlighted, you see there's different options appear here. Um, and I don't know how you pronounce this. Calibri? Is that I? Um, if you do the drop down on that, you can choose a different font. So I can choose Algerian. And get to look different. You can also up here change the font. See how it says Algerian up here? I can do the drop down, left mouse click on this, and choose uh, Bau, Bar, Bauhaus 93. Change it to that. Now, here's the font size. Um, have you gone by and seen some of the um, signs people have made? And they think people will be able to read it from their car, but it's so small, unless you actually stopped. Maybe when you got out of your car, you can't even see it. Um, well, that's the uh, same idea here. If you're creating some kind of document you're going to give somebody to read, if you're going to create some kind of poster that you're going to post somewhere, um, you need to increase the size of it, then that's what the, the font size is. So there's 24 here. I could do the drop down and change it to 72. That's too big for me, so I'll put it back to 26. The nice part about Word and some of you may have older versions of Word, so you may not see this. But the newer version of Word is such that when you choose a new font, it will automatically change it on the screen for you. So you can see it before you choose it. Now that's covered up by that, so that's kind of a bad example. But let me choose green. And I'll come over here. And see, this is what 48 looks like. 36, 28, 
and so forth. Change that one word. So if you want something to really stand out, um, then you can you can do it that way. You can also up here. Uh, we went from 36 to 48, but you can come up here and if you type in 42, then you can put your own number in there. I don't think you can put decimals. Never have tried. Let me try it. Yeah, I guess it'll let you. That's interesting. Yeah, it, it allowed me to do 42.5. Now, maybe I didn't actually do anything because the difference between 42 and 42.5 is probably not something I can see in my eye. Let's see, 45.5. There's 45.5, and let's see 45. Oh, it did change. Um, so I don't know what kind of 45.1337. Not a valid number. You're right. It doesn't take 45.2. Let me see, 45.75, no, I think you're right. I think it just uh, by 0.5. Yeah. Now, it used to be that you could not do that with every one of these fonts. Um, I would guess that everything that comes default with Word, you can do that with. Used to be some of the old fonts. You could not uh, type in a number that wasn't in the list. Um, so if you download a font, uh, for example, you may not be able to do that with all of them. Now to the right of that, it says increase font size. It also says decrease font size. So if I choose the decrease font size, it'll bring it down. And then along the same lines, if I do the increase font size, you increase it, which is kind of a nice feature. If you're not quite sure what font it is, and that kind of bothers you how it just you know changes like that, you can highlight whatever and and choose one of those options. Drop a drink here. Now to the right of that, there's a change case. And, but even more than that, you see how, and I know it's small, so it's kind of hard to see, but there's a drop down arrow next to that. Whenever you have a drop down arrow next to any of these, that means there's a series of choices that you can choose from. So if I choose that, you see there's sentence case, lowercase, uppercase, capitalize each word, toggle case. So if I want to change that all to uppercase, I could choose uppercase and it changes that. And so I don't have to then um, retype the retype the word. I can change case with that. If I choose sentence case, it goes like that. Uh, if you do the drop down arrow next to that, it's the first one. Now, if you're wondering what that is, if if I um, I click too many times each time there, okay, I got sentence highlighted. And now let me go change the case on that to all uppercase, like that. And now if I come back to um, that and choose sentence case, you notice how it made everything what it should be in a normal sentence except for my first letter which it made uppercase, which is what a sentence should be, right? Um, so it puts it in the, the correct format for a sentence.
You can also capitalize each word. Sometimes I like to do that. Um, I don't know why. Just yeah, just looks looks better to me sometimes than like a title. You don't like that. <laughs> See, I catch myself on that all the time because I, I teach online, and uh, one of the places I teach for, they, they have to do everything in APA. And so when you put in the, that title, my, my inclination is I want to capitalize each letter, but you're right, it's only the first one that should be, should be capitalized. I, I don't really like using the title for Rules for that? Oh, uh, let me change that back to sentence case. There we go. Now, to the right of that is a clear all formatting. You know, if you have, um, and you see it says remove all formatting from the selection, leaving only normal unformatted text. So if you've kind of messed it all up, if you click that, it'll put everything back to, back to um, the start. This is especially useful if you copy something from another source and paste it in. We'll be looking at the clipboard and how to copy and so forth. Um, yeah, the little A with a red. Um, oh, it doesn't. Now, oh, Control Z won't undo that. That's that's good because I'm getting ready to show that. Because that's a, that is actually a good thing. If you this new um, feature that they added in for Word takes up maybe what a fifth of the page, sixth of the page. Uh, so it takes up a lot of a lot of screen space. 
And over here on the right hand side, you see the um, you see where my mouse is over in the far right. When you put your mouse over, it tells you collapse a rib ribbon. It says need a little bit more space, collapse a ribbon so that only the tab names show. So if you click that up up arrow, it'll disappear. So now you have a lot more uh, space on your screen. Like when I taught uh, college algebra this morning, I was typing some stuff in Word, some steps, and I never thought of that, <laughs> but it wasn't fitting on the screen. And I'm sitting here, this is great. And I was having to go back and forth and, and uh, that would have been handy right there. Now to get it to come back, if you click one of these options, doesn't matter which one, it'll pop down and then over here, there's now a one looks like a little push pin. And if you click that push pin, Little arrow, let me look. Yeah, the arrow would be if you have them. Um, Now this is um, now this is um, specific to just um, Microsoft Word. That's becoming a standard in a lot of packages. If you see the a push pin feature, um, they have this feature called auto hide. So it'll auto hide part of your part of what you're you're working with, so you have more space. But you can always push the push pin uh, to make it stay on the screen all the time. Yeah. Now I click layout. Now this is different. If I click the home up here. It'll put these back on the screen. So this allows you to go to different options. And they've tried to tried to gear this toward um, logical, oh, logical viewing. You know, if you want to insert something, go to insert. If you want to design something, go to design. You want to lay it out, go to layout. References, mailings, like um, mail merge and so forth. Review. That's like if you want to review your spelling, your grammar, so forth. And uh, then view option. The one that didn't make any sense to me is the home. Um, home, majority of this is geared around making, uh, making it look a certain way. I would think this should say formatting, um, personally here. But um, it's called home. Okay. Now you see there's a B. This B is for bold. So if you double click one of your words, you should see a word highlighted. And then you can come up here and click the, the B, uh, make it bold. This uh, I to the right of it is italics. And the nice part about it is, is if you don't remember this, it's not a big deal. If you just put your mouse over it and don't click anything, it'll tell you what it does. This says italicize your text. The one to the right of it says underline your text. This says strike through, subscript. So I'm just putting my mouse over these options up here and it's telling me what each one does. So if I come back here and I click italics, then it'll italicize that. Yours isn't italicized? Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, I need to. I started um, volunteering at the uh, Union Rescue Mission. They got a bookstore there that helps support the mission and so forth. And um, it's kind of fun. You go in and you scan books. Uh, so you scan ISBN, type them in if it's not in there. Really fantastic uh, volunteering opportunity. And uh, I'm getting a lot of exercise. <laughs> some, I'm, I, some people just carry the books and drop them in the bins, but I'm throwing them. So I'm, I'm not used to this much exercise. So I'm just now getting used to it. So I need to exercise. Oh, did you? Um, now you see after you choose those, they're now bold. So now that I got this highlighted, I can come up here and I click the italicize and it takes that off. So it's no longer italicized. So you just, by undoing it, you just click the button again. Now you do have to have something selected. If I'm clicking right here and I have nothing selected, if I click bold, italicize and uh, this underline here, You'll see nothing changed. It's because it's now changing it based upon my current prompt. So now, if I type something, then whatever I have selected here will apply to whatever I have typed. Personally, I don't think that's a good thing to do. I think it's best just to type it all in raw format and then go back and format it to however you want. Um, I wouldn't try to format it on the fly as you go. I think it's just um, overkill. Okay. Double click something. You notice to the right of the underline, there's a drop down. Remember, whenever there's a drop down, that means there's other options available. So if I choose that, instead of doing a normal underline, I can do a double underline. I think they use that in accounting to indicate totals. Um, thick underline, you can put a dash there. Big dash, uh, dot dash, dot dot dash, wave underline. Um, so if I change, choose the wave underline, it looks like that. And I also noticed that there's an underlying color here. So if you want it to be green, or um, green doesn't hardly really show up. A lot of people overlook that. They think the underlying is the only thing that exists. But again, that drop down, um, so it's available. Now, let's say I didn't want to do that. This is probably one of the, the best features of um, Word is the undo. Um, you come up here, and it's like, what in the world did I just do? Um, I come up here, and you see this little arrow going backwards. This is the undo. And if I click that and keep clicking it, it'll undo my changes. So it keeps a history. I don't know how long the history is, but you can keep going back on your, your changes. You see this other arrow is going this way. If you go back too far, like, ooh, I didn't want to go back that far, then you can click this arrow here to re redo it. So go ahead and click those arrows and just so you can see it. Change, done doing your changes, and then you could do the redo to even put them back. This is probably kind of bold to say. In every Windows package, Control Z undoes whatever. Now, what I mean by the Control Z is there's a button down there on the very bottom row on the left hand side. It's on the right side and side too. It says CTRL.
Um, it's right next to. So, for example, you see, I got this line I just typed, didn't I? If I click on that three times and highlight it, and I press my delete key, and I think, whoa, I didn't want to do that. Um, if you do control Z, it undoes that. Now for Word, that's not very important because you got this button up here. You can undo that. But it applies in every Windows package. So if you're in a browser and you are typing in uh, some kind of, you're ordering something and you're typing in some kind of form and you, you, you mess it up. If you do control Z, it'll probably put it back. Probably. So. This is nice because I've been in packages where um, I really made a serious mistake and I did a control Z and it put it back to where it was. So Obviously it doesn't fix uh, every issue. Like it thinks if you're hiding this, it doesn't figure that's a, a change to the document. So it doesn't undo it. Okay, so I'm going to double click on um, a word again. Strike through is just what you think. Strike through. Um, subscript. Makes it a subscript. In English, uh, is it a, is that what they use for references? For MLA or do you remember? Yeah. Right. It'll, it'll put it up up above. So. So it's superscript then. So if I had a five here and I selected the five, see, and I can just then choose uh, that to put it up like that. Is that how you do it? APA is a lot easier. APA, you don't have to put numbers. <laughs> you just say, according to Hayes, 2019, and then you say whatever, and then down below, you just have your reference. Um, a lot of people like using APA because it's easier. But every once in a while, I see people put in an MLA format, and I'm sitting there scratching my hips. I don't know MLA, and I'm guessing they're right. APA. It's a... Oh, okay. Yeah, um, it's usually nursing students are that I'm grading their papers, and they're they got they use the APA, and but every once in a while an MLA um, slips out. Assuming it's MLA. Okay, so I'm gonna double click a word again. And there's a, a text effects and, and uh, typo typography, if I'm saying that right. Uh, this allows you to have some, some fun. And you see there's a little drop down to it. If you choose the drop down, you can have it look, look different. Um, so you get that kind of look. Choose drop down, I can have it uh, that, this. So this is kind of block lettering. My wife was throwing away a piece of cardboard that I bought and I wrote something on it and I wanted to sell something. I want people to be able to see it from the road. So I, I hand did the block lettering and so forth. Not that I have a printer that could handle it, but this is a way if I was wanting to sell something, put a notice up or you just want to catch people's attention. 
like if you work at uh, or you go to some kind of organization, you want to put up a little flyer about a, a dinner that's going to happen. Um, dinner on Sunday, you put that there, people wouldn't be able to see it. And if you highlight that, um, you can make it bigger for one thing. And people would see that. But then if you choose this um, here, you can really make it stand out. So maybe it'd catch people's eyes. Um, even more than that, there's a bunch down here. You can outline, uh, change, the, change the color on that. You can apply a shadow effect, reflection. Reflection is so it like appears down like that. Make it glow. <laughs> Sunday. I don't have no clue what ligatures mean. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably saying that wrong. L I G A T U R E S. Um, historical printing. I don't know. Of course, all of this is based upon whether you um, have a um, color printer. If it's black and white, it probably still won't look great. Yeah, that, that uh, glow, you can really make it stand out. It's such a, it's just a simple button right here, but if you click that drop down, it just has uh, a whole slew of uh, possibilities here. Now, I'm not very artistic, very creative, um, so things I'd come up with don't look the greatest, but if you're that type of creative person, you can uh, do this and have a lot of, uh, a lot of different effects. Okay, I'm going to double click K9 again. The um, right to the right of it here, it says text highlight color. Make your text pop by highlighting it in a bright color. And again, there's a drop down next to it, so you can choose these uh, different colors here. So if I choose green, you see it uh, put a background of green on it. And some of you have already done that. Um, over here, this changes the actual font color. So if I don't want black, if I do the drop down, um, can I not have it selected? Let me select it. There you go. That's horrible. Probably as good as I'm going to get. So you can apply that. Okay, so I'm going to double click um, another word, select it. And um, the font color, if I do the drop down on that, you see there's a more colors option. If you choose the more colors, um, you can come here and you can choose a variety of ones. But even more than that, there's a custom tab here. If I click that, this is where you can have a wide range of colors. Identical 
Um, I don't think I've ever seen that in Word. Well, that does seem like it's something it should have. Sure enough, it doesn't. Now, uh, and I don't know very much about colors, but um, this RGB that you see here refers to red, green, blue. And so uh, all the different colors that we, uh, all the basic colors that we can use uh, are just different combinations of inserting a certain amount of red, certain amount of green, certain amount of blue in there. Um, I suppose the same principle if you ever went and bought paint and they program that in, it's like inserting different, um, you know, percentages of the colors, and then that makes up whatever they're trying to achieve. You can click in here to choose a color. Down here in a new tab, you see which one you chose. You can also type the numbers in here. Um, I don't know what 000 would be, if that'd be white or black. Okay. So zero, zero, zero gives us black. Um, I don't know what the largest number is. Let's put 500. I know it's not 500, but 255. Okay, so 255, 255, 255, and that's white. Um, probably doesn't mean a whole lot unless you're really into graphic design type of deal. Uh, people in des uh, graphic design, you know, really live and breathe by this. My eyes aren't good enough to tell the difference between the color green versus that color green. There's also this right here, HSL, which is who, hue, <laughs> saturation, and I think that's lumination. A uh, different way of way you can re represent colors. There's a third one that's used, actually used in graphic design that isn't here, and I don't remember what the third one, or there's a third major one. And, um, but it isn't uh, listed here. Okay, so I'll just choose any color. Um, that's interesting. It's not changing. Now we got 255 set. How bizarre. My new isn't updating here after I put that 255. More colors. Now, um, if I double click a longer word like Windows, there's a gradient down here. And if I choose uh, one of the gradients, like this right here, It'll go from a lighter to a darker. That's a gradient. I wonder if you can do a gradient in color. Let's see. Yeah, you can. So after you choose the color, if you come down here and choose gradient, So you can have it fading out or coming in or something. If I double click the uh, this, get the entire sentence and choose gradient. So it applies it to all, all of what you have selected. Yeah, it's not very good, is it? <laughs> Can't hardly see it. Again, undo is fantastic for undoing that. Is there any questions on any of those options? Now, under, under the fonts here, you got a lot of different fonts available. 
you can download um, new fonts. So if you find some on the the uh, internet, you can uh, download them. I think you go to control panel and add them in there and then they're available through Word. Um, I never have done that. Um, have you say you've done that where you downloaded fonts? Or? Yeah, I guess. Really? So you'd have to hand print A, B, C, and so forth, and uh -huh. I guess if I come down here, if I click this type here to search, and I just type font. Here's font settings. And if I click that, that would allow me probably then to um, get more fonts in Microsoft Store. So I guess they have it so you can buy it. <laughs> now, I don't know how you'd add a one you downloaded for free. But... Um, it used to be you just had to drop it in the uh, one folder. If you dropped in a specific folder, then that was all it was. But uh, that's been a while. Oh, here's fonts down here. No? Hmm. I don't know. Get more fonts in the Microsoft Store. This ones you can purchase, but I'll close that. And I'm going to close that and go back to Word. Now, they provide these here, and they try to provide the most useful ones so you can see them. Down in the bottom right-hand corner, I don't know what it is, but there's a little, I think it's an arrow. It's so small, my eyes can't see it. Um, but I'm looking specifically in this first box here, this font box. If I put my mouse over it, it says font, uh, control plus D. If you click that, that'll bring up more options. <clears throat> Now, in this case, um, nothing new there. Font color, all these you can do from the other one. Small caps, all caps. Hidden, I don't think that was a, uh, one of the options, but you can hide text for whatever reason. Um, there's an advanced feature over here. Character spacing. So this is where you get into some of the more, um, more advanced things you can do on on changing um, the space between characters. <laughs> see the example down here, there's windows. If I choose 100, see how the letters are together like that? And that change. Um, uh, in the, uh, under the home, in the font area, in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see a little arrow, I think it is. It's real small. You see it? Then I went to advanced. And they got a preview down here. And if you change scale to 200, it looks like the character is a little bit further apart, plus the, the they're actually wider to the, to the characters. Spacing, expanded, condensed. Now, when you do expanded, you can choose this by one, one point. You can keep changing that. Have it go out like that. So if you want the letters further apart, that's how you can change it without like putting physically putting spaces in there. Normal, raised, lowered. Uh, you might say, what's the difference between that and subscript and superscript? Um, 
Well, this you can tell by what degree. This kerning here, uh, and I this been so long, I don't remember what kerning is, but I know it's a graphic design type feature. May how to make your characters look a certain way. Now down here is a text effect. If you click that, you can do text fill, transparency. Can you see through your uh, word? So you could change that. Uh, down here at the bottom, you see there's a button that says text effects. And then you come down here and you change transparency. Uh, another word that they use for that is opacity, but um, then I'm not sure if there's a difference between those two. Oh, you expand the text fill. If you click the text fill. I'm a little disappointed it doesn't actually show it on the screen so you can see what it looks like. But I'll click OK on that. I'll click OK again. Or maybe it didn't. I just didn't notice that. I was looking at K9 instead of this one. So that's what it showed for Windows there. And if you're creative, if you got that eye, you can do what you can see this. I'm not very creative. I mean, I, I, I know what they do, but to actually make something that's pleasing to the eye is beyond me. Yes. Yeah, pretty much all this formatting you see here, I'm guessing would be in Publisher, and Publisher would probably have an additional. Now, Excel has some of this, but I don't think it has all of this. Um, I don't know if you can do a, a subscript on just like one character in, in Excel, but I might be wrong. I never have tried it. Okay, so that's our um, that's our um, formatting, fonts, colors, and so forth. Now to the left of it, I skipped over this so we'd have something to work with. This is probably one of the coolest uh, items in Word. You see where it says Format Painter? Double click one of your words if you've, you've applied formatting to. Doesn't matter what, which one you do. And click this Format Painter. So you click it one time with the left mouse button. And then come over to another, another word and put your, you have your mouse to the, the cursor to the right of the word or to the left. You click and hold down with your left mouse button and drag and then lit up. And it'll apply the formatting you did over here to whatever you applied it to. This is a nice feature. If you, um, if you spend some time getting some formatting, I know you can insert a picture, and I think if you create a brand new picture, I think you can you can uh, create a new one. Just to skip ahead a little bit, she was asking if you can uh, draw with Word. And over here in Insert, if I choose, that's from File. Hmm. I don't know. I'll um, make a note on that. I'll see if I can find out the answer to that question.
Okay, so um, if you if you get one paragraph like your exactly like you want it, that's how you can copy one formatting to another formatting. See, exact for example, this now I have here this kind of pinkish. If I double click that, come up here and choose Format Painter. I don't know if you can double click a word on here. Let me try it. Okay, you can double click the word you want to apply it to instead of uh, actually highlighting it and applying it. So I wonder if I choose this, I click down here anywhere. You don't have to be in a particular part of it, just to somewhere in there. If I click Format Painter, now I'm going to click three times in this sentence. One, two, three. Well, <laughs> if I probably, if I could click, you know, correctly, it would apply to the entire sentence. Let's see it applied to the package. Now, um, we're going to take a look at uh, something called the clipboard a little bit closer. If I um, double, double click a word, doesn't matter which one you do, okay, double click house. You see there's a copy here. Um, if I choose the co a copy, and then I click somewhere else, so I click down here, and then I choose paste. That'll paste that in. It's kind of the, the principles like um, you have a you have a clipboard, you know, the regular clipboard. And if I if I make a copy, a photocopy of a piece of paper, you know, and I put that in the clipboard, give you the clipboard, and then you take the piece of paper out. So you got a copy of it, don't you? Um, so that's uh, that's the idea behind it. You might be saying, well, how's that exactly relate to clipboard? Well, that's better, best as they did, came up with for Windows. <laughs> now, if I have a clipboard, I could take the same piece of paper here. Instead of making a copy of it, I could put it on a clipboard and give you the clipboard, right? I would no longer have the piece of paper anymore, would I? You can do the same thing with this. Let's say I double click another word, double click type. You see how there's a cut feature? That'll actually remove it. It'll put it to the clipboard and remove it from my document. You see how that word is now gone? And if I click somewhere else and I choose paste, that'll paste that in. Um, yeah, you could do that. What she, what she's looking at is there's a lot of other options. Like, let's say I want to copy this package. Do you like my formatting on the package? Some of you, maybe not. It's okay. It's okay. Not great. So let's say I want to copy this, but I don't want all that formatting because you think, boy, that's horrendous. You got that orange and it's just gaudy and so forth. Um, if I come up here and do a copy, and then I go to where I want to put it at, and you see there's a drop down right underneath the paste. If you choose a drop down, you see there's one that says keep source formatting, and it still keeps the gaudy orange, doesn't it? If I go to the right, it says merge formatting. And you notice that the orange is now gone. And even to the right of it where it says keep text only, uh, this is where it just uh, the text, it doesn't copy any of the formatting at all. So if I choose that, it'll copy package with no formatting at all. You don't have these three buttons? Copied. 
Yeah, if you haven't, uh, if you click somewhere, if you double click a word and you choose your, your copy or cut, whichever you want. And then if you click somewhere else in your document, and now if you do it, like you should said, you, you should have those three options. Just two. What she's on the scene, I have no clue on. <laughs> but let me let me uh, show it. If you um, down here in the very bottom uh, bar, you should see a little uh, circle that's red, green, yellow, has a circle in the middle. That's your browser. Chrome. Uh, Chrome. Yeah. So that comes up here. Now, um, to, to uh, set your internet, if you come over here to the, to the right-hand side, uh, which one's it? There it is. If one looks like a uh, monitor with an extra cable, or I don't know what that is. But if you click that one, and then choose uh, Cali Guest. Yeah, you guys are already connected. Um, uh, you choose this um, one looks like a, a monitor with an extra cable on the left. And then choose Cali Guest. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to come up here and type my, my website name. This is called an URL. Um, I think that stands for Uniform Resource Locator, but it doesn't matter. It's, uh, uh, it's spelled URL. And I'm going to type uh, www.google.com. And now you can search, search for something. And I'm going to search for Pink Panther. Pink Panther has never failed me in bringing up something inappropriate. Other things you search for may bring up something inappropriate, so, um, but Pink Panther is always a safe one. Oh, and uh, then go to www.google.com.
What comes up? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's just whatever. Right, like if you like the page that you're on, you can come over here and there's an option somewhere where you can make that your default page. I couldn't tell you where it's at. Cause... Oh, I um, I typed in uh, google.com and then I typed in Pink Panther. And I did enter. Yeah, we'll, we'll work with an image. Now over here, you see there's options says all videos, images, shopping, news. I'm going to click images. And you got a bunch of different pictures here. And you don't have to search for Pink Panther. You can search for whatever you want. I just didn't want to randomly put search for something, have something inappropriate come up on the screen. That'd be my luck. Um, so I'm going to right click on one of these. I'm going to right click on this one. And you see there's a copy image. So I'm going to choose that copy image. Now, where do you think I just copied it to? Clipboard. And so now if I come over to Word and I click somewhere, and if I go to my paste option, well, maybe online. I thought you could paste it in here. I did. You did? Well, that was me. It says copy image here. Strange. Let me open it up. Let me click it. Now I'll right click on it. Copy image. There it goes. Well, that's kind of big. I have no clue why that first one, uh, the fact it allowed me to copy the image, it should have copied the image, but obviously not. Let's see. Now, what I fully expected, and maybe I haven't done this, is I fully expected when I came here that there would be an option that said copy picture. Remember how you were saying copy picture earlier? Um, I thought that would be a third option or another option now, but there wasn't. So that's really interesting. Now, mine came in pretty big, didn't it? You know, there's no way I'm going to be able to print that and show it. If you click the image you just brought in, there'll be little white circles on the corners. And you can uh, put your mouse over those. And if your mouse becomes a double white arrow and you click and hold down and start moving your mouse in, you can make the picture smaller. And I'm going to have to make mine a lot smaller.
this is a really nice way to integrate um, uh, pictures from the internet uh, with what you're seeing. And we're going to see better ways of formatting this because this formatting looks horrible here, doesn't it? Um, and we'll see better ways of doing that. That's the beauty of Word, of Word, Excel, and Windows, is everything integrates together. So if you have something over in a browser and you want to put it into Word, you can do it. If you have something in Excel and you want to put that over into Word, you can do it. Um, so lots of different options available there. Now you also notice, um, let me double click a word and copy that. And the paste has a drop down, but you see there's also paste special and set default paste. Remember how yours was coming in with a picture format? Down here, you see I can paste these all as these different items here. Picture. Why would you that text come in this picture? Sure enough, it's a picture. <laughs> I guess you can bring a text in this picture. Um, oh, what I did, I'm doing Control Z a couple of times to get rid of that. I highlighted a word and I copied it. And now I'm clicking somewhere else. And I do my drop down for paste and see there's a paste special. At this point, this is how you can um, paste it in. Uh, formatted text, RTF, unformatted text. You can you can put it as a picture. Um, you see where it says paste? There's a uh, arrow right underneath it. If you do that drop down there, paste special, and you can paste text as a picture. I'm not even sure where that went. Right. Now, you can't. You do have that feature, and there's there's other there's other options you can do with pictures too. See, like if I had this here, there's picture tools. And if I choose the format here, I suppose you could apply all these effects. Picture style. Okay, I guess I could see why maybe you'd want to. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why I put all this space here at the end. Um, you can crop it. We haven't talked about that, but like if you have this picture selected here where it's got the little white circles and you click the format tab, there's this crop feature here. Uh, it says crop your picture, remove any unwanted areas. That's clear to the far right here under size. And from there, um, you might mind have to scroll to the right, but then you can grab this this edge here, um, clear to the far right underneath the format tab. Mind resizing it. Maybe I grabbed the wrong thing. Let me try that again. Uh, there, grab the right thing. If you grab the black black uh, item, of course, it still looks like that part of that picture is still there. 
wonder how you apply the crop. Ah, I never have worked with this. This is interesting. <laughs> You'd be shocked at the the type of creative stuff I create with Word, the, like put up on a bulletin board or so forth. It's pretty. Make my font big or something. You know, I don't even do colors really. But, but yeah, there's lots of options under here. The picture styles you can apply. If you do the drop down here, you can have it go in an angle. That way it looks like it's leaning backwards. Um, your format will appear once you click on the image. So once you see the white circles on there, if you look up here, you'll have a format tab. And if you click the format tab, uh, these are all the different things you can you can do to change the color, I guess. Um, you, you got it. Um, the over here in the far left, uh, the one that says uh. Color, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you. Yeah, I was trying to say, well, I, I shouldn't say the one that says color. That uh, is nothing's nothing simple until you've done it, you know, over and over, right? Now, as you put your mouse over these, these tell you what it would do. Like this one here under correction says, increases brightness by 40% and decreases contrast by 40%. I have no clue what that would do exactly. It just looks like that. Uh, nice part about that is, again, you can do your undo, put it back where it was. There's picture effects here that has a lot more options. You can do shadows on them, reflections, glow, just like we saw before. That puts a glow around the image. Um, if you have your picture selected, over here, oops. Over here under the format, and then uh, picture effects right here. You think I, you think I got a future in uh, graphic design? <laughs> Yeah, because you see the more glow off, more glow colors down here. You can change that. Um, I don't know what glow options does. Ah, it brings up this. Three D rotation. Sometimes that looks good. Sometimes it doesn't. Now, um, when you have this selected, in the upper right-hand corner, you see a little icon that has a half circle on it. You see this a lot in Word. When you have something selected, if you choose this, this will bring up options you can do. Now, in this case, this applies to text that's go maybe beside it. How is it going to handle it type of deal? 
And as always, if you right click on the image, it'll bring up um, the different options you can do. You're asking about, can I draw on the, the image earlier? And uh, this is what I was uh, thinking of, is somehow get to the edit picture. Like if I choose edit picture, maybe. Well, I'm going to do a control Z. <laughs> How bizarre. It just took my picture away. Interesting. Okay, don't choose that a picture. <laughs> Okay, and copy that. Paste that in as a picture. Crop that. One. Uh. Interesting. I can't get my picture back now. Oh, well. I was done playing that picture anyway. For the most part, all I've really ever done with pictures is to paste them in and resize them. Um, but there's a lot you can do with it. You can uh, change uh, the angle, so forth. You see up here, after you choose a picture, there's this uh, option up here. You can very easily click that and change it to a different angle. Now, part of the issue, though, is that when you do that, see how this formatting goes clear to the top? It assumes that the height of that line is now this high. Um, and there's different ways you can uh, handle that. Uh, the way I usually do it is I put it into something called a table, which we're going to look at in the coming, coming uh, sessions. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of a nice, nice feature. Um, questions on either? Um, you might not, because I had the background set on this. It's like if I if I had this word selected, you see this option here, the text highlight color. If you didn't have, if you had no color here, you wouldn't have that going up like that. It would look better. Um, so, yeah, it isn't probably something you really do want. Now, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you, uh, this has nothing to do with Word, but I, I show it to everybody. It's one of the coolest things on the Internet, and you have to see it. So, go back to Google Chrome. And we're going to go to a website that's called maps.google.com. Some of you may have been to this, uh, been to this already. So maps.google.com. How many of you have been here? One person? Yeah, tell people. This is probably one of the coolest things on the internet, I think. 
uh, go into Google Chrome, and then you're going to type maps.google.com. Yeah. It recognizes uh, your location, and so it brings up, um, brings it up. Now you could do maps on here and everything, and then we're not going to go into all the details on that. Um, but down, oh no, dot com. Yeah, so maps.google.com. And did it even find out where we're at? I guess it pretty well did, didn't it? That's kind of scary. Really? See, mine, uh, mine thinks I'm in Wellington. How strange. Of course, all my searches are still from uh, uh, Las Vegas. You can see what my, where my mind is in Las Vegas. Cakes, the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> so. Now, um, wherever you're, wherever you're located at, you see there's a little golden person down there in the bottom right hand corner. And if you put your mouse over that golden person, it turns to the side. If you click with your left mouse button and drag, and drop that person on a street. Now you can't drop the person in the middle of a field. You have to drop them actually on a street. And you can, uh, it's like you're in a car. So if I, if I click and hold down my left mouse button and move it, then I can uh, change my view. So again, I just held down my left mouse button and moved my mouse, and it changes your view. And now if you click down the street, you'll go down the street. Well, what's a what's the benefit of this? Um, you can spy on people, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna buy a house in Peabody uh, three or four months ago. Uh, it was on uh, for sale for three thousand dollars, and I thought this would be something that I could work with on my son to help us uh, fix it up, and we could learn together. And uh, I went and looked at the house, and from the street view, it looked okay. It looked good. It's like, well, this, how come this is for 3000 Well, the people that lived there had used their backyard as a dump for probably five years. Um, <laughs> it's just like, we're looking at this like, oh, my, I, I don't think we want this kind of challenge. Um, but I did go on street view to look at it first. And even more than that, you see up here, um, after you've done that, there's an arrow if you click that arrow in the upper left-hand corner, that'll take you back to where you can put a new address in. Let's say I want to go to Japan. I'm going to type Japan and press enter. <clears throat> and here's Japan. Now over here, I can use my left mouse button, click and hold down, and I can rearrange it. Now, the mouse wheel is this red button in there. And if you use that, you can scroll in and out. So I'm going to scroll into Japan until I get to some kind of road. Oh, dear. Yeah. Probably wouldn't have much luck with Mongolia, but I bet the Philippines you could. Now, when you get in closer, if you drag your little golden person, 
and drop them on a street, I'm now in Japan. And I can scroll down, and it's kind of interesting. Doesn't Japan look like us? Streets are a little bit more narrow. You get the ocean? Brings up street view, and that might just be a video. Um, One day I went to London, uh, not London, not London. Um, so drove around. I was in Alaska. I had a lot of fun in Alaska. About 45 minutes as I was going down Alaskan Highway, looking at the mountains and the, the side and so forth. If I wasn't so cheap, I'd actually travel. Now, of course, there's some countries you can't go to because they don't allow it. Yeah. Like right now, I'm sitting here um, in Japan. By the way, you know, the you, you watch some of those movies where they got the, the pagoda type houses and so forth. And a lot of the cities don't look much different than ours. I had to get out to the countryside to get a lot of the, you know, the houses that look like those traditional movie type. Though so this one over here kind of looks like a little pagoda. If I keep doing my mouse wheel out, it'll eventually see so I can see the you know the layout, you know how things are laid out. One of the houses I was looking at buying um, out in the country, um, I I did this to kind of see what was around it, where was the river at, and so forth. Um, but if you keep scrolling out. You'll eventually go to the world. And some of you saw this already. Once you get to the world, you can twirl the world around and go to a different country.
I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording on that because sometimes when I start doing too much graphics, <laughs> it crashes the video. Um, so I have to be careful about that. I don't know where I'm at. Russia, I guess. That looks like Russia. I don't think uh, Russia probably allows Google to go around with the little cars. Have you ever seen one of those cars? Have you? Yeah. They're, um, uh, they have cameras on it, and they take these 2D pictures of all of you, and somehow they use mathematics and graphics to give you that 3D, 3D look. Um, so it's pretty, pretty neat, uh, pretty neat feature on that. Oops. I'm doing that. Um, that's a 